Do you need the latest hardware available? Or should you wait for the next generation of parts to come out? That's what we're talking about today. Stay tuned. I've noticed a lot of computer enthusiasts have a form of hardware snobbery going on. It's this mentality that the only hardware worth using is the absolute bleeding edge. It's like mid-tier hardware doesn't even exist. Do you need the latest and greatest hardware? No, probably not. You may want it, but you don't necessarily need it. The vast majority of people do not need the latest hardware. There is Definitely exceptions to this, but consider this. The mid-tier hardware of today is much faster than the high-end hardware of yesterday. And it did just fine then. In fact, the same people claiming you need high-end parts of today said you needed high-end parts in the last generation, of which today's mid-tier walks all over. I've been a computer tech for over 20 years, and my systems are all almost always mid-range machines. I've always built my systems based on the mentality of bang for the buck. Because of this, I've rarely used the top tier components. My main system today is a Ryzen 5 3600 on a B450 motherboard. This system has 32 gigs of RAM and a GeForce 1660. The 1660 is actually new. The system actually started out with a 750 Ti, and it was great. It played all the games I wanted to play just fine. Granted, not at the resolution I wanted to play them, but it did just fine. On this system, I run Adobe Premiere to edit all these videos in a Windows 10 VM on top of Linux. I never thought I'd be able to use Adobe Premiere in a virtual machine, but this system has enough performance that it runs great. The system I had before this was an AMD FX6300. That system was okay, and today it's still running strong as my file server. Now, the FX processors were not very impressive, but they were still good CPUs. However, today we live in a time when computer hardware is better than ever. The hardware we have today simply over delivers. I'm literally still upgrading Core 2 Duos with Windows 10, an SSD upgrade, and these systems are running great. Let me give you an example. I had a Core 2 Duo and a 4th Gen i7 side by side on my bench a few months ago. Both of them were in my shop to get upgraded to Windows 10. The Core 2 was getting an SSD and the i7 was being upgraded with its original spinning disk. When both systems were done, that Core 2 was faster. Not by a little bit either, it was a lot faster. This is a system that the majority of enthusiasts today would throw on the recycle pile. However, today, that system is sitting at a desk in a real estate office running great. Now, I'm not suggesting you go steal your grandma's Core 2 Duo. All I'm saying is that modern hardware is in most cases disproportionately powerful when compared to the tasks that we use it for. In the case of my example, most of that can be attributed to the SSD, However, the system was still faster. Are you saying that I don't need a 32 core thread ripper? No, you literally spend all of your time on eBay looking at broken down trucks. If anything, you need a little more memory for the 300 Chrome tabs you have open. <laughs> I've also heard people recommending not buying hardware prior to the release of next generation parts. While there are legitimate benefits to this, it's not always for the right reasons. If you're waiting for the 3000 series RTX cards while you're using your broken down old 9600 GSO because you have to have the absolute latest, then remember, in a few months, there's going to be something else that's the absolute latest. It's a perpetual race to the top that you will never achieve for more than a few months. There is a benefit, though, to waiting for the next generation hardware to be released. When the new hardware is released, the previous silicone drops in price. When the 3000 series NVIDIA cards come out, the 2080 Ti's are not going to cost $1,200. With that said, the old silicone isn't manufactured anymore either, and it's a race with everyone else that's been waiting for the prices to drop to get their hands on what you've been waiting to buy. So don't expect to get that specific model 2070 that you have on your Amazon wish list. So if you don't mind not having as much choice picking up the bargain bin pricing on the last generation cards, then fine. But if you're still using that 
9600 GSO just waiting for the prices to drop with the next generation cards, there's another generation right around the corner and the new cards are going to drop in price too. Why are you struggling playing your favorite game at 20 frames a second just because you want a great deal? This is the computer industry and prices drop all the time on everything. You don't have to have buyer's remorse because the video card you bought two months ago cost $100 less today. When you bought it, it was worth the price you paid for it, otherwise you wouldn't have bought it. Just be happy with what you have and enjoy your computer. Think of the good side. Now you can recommend that same card to your friends and it's 100 bucks cheaper. I'm not saying that you shouldn't buy high-end hardware. I'm not saying that at all. If it's in your budget and it's something that you want, then go for it. All I'm, I'm just saying that for the vast majority of tasks that you use your computer for, you simply don't need it. Custom-built computers are an extension of our personality. They don't have to be built the way that everyone else is building theirs. I've seen rigs with 2080 Ti's and SLI. This is ridiculous. There's absolutely no need for that. In fact, I don't even think anything out today takes advantage of it. In some cases, it actually hurts your performance. But if you genuinely want that and you can afford it, then do it. Just don't do it because some random guy on Facebook says you have to in order to have a good system. I have an amazing system with a 1660. Now you wait a gosh darn second here. Are you telling me I don't need two 2080 Ti's and SLI? Absolutely not. Literally, the only game you play is a semi-truck simulator. <sighs> In closing, I just want to say that I'm not downing on people who buy bleeding edge hardware. If that's what you want and you can afford it, then go for it. I'm just saying that you don't need to cripple yourself financially in order to have a system that matches the specs of some computer you saw in a YouTube video. You don't have to have all those high-end parts to have a good computer. Shoot, I spent more money on water cooling my computer than I did on the hardware to build it. Did my computer need to be water cooled? No, I did it because it looked cool and that's what I wanted. To be honest with you, I could have gotten the same performance out of an AIO for a fraction of the price. What I'm saying, and the purpose for making this video, is to reassure you that you can have a great system on mid-tier parts. To be honest with you, I actually like systems with personality more than systems with the highest end parts. Make your system yours, and don't worry about people that say that's not a good enough processor or that graphics card isn't good enough, because at the end of the day, they're not using your computer, you are, and be proud of what you have. If this was helpful, then please like this video and give me your thoughts in the comments. I'm really interested in what other people stand on this subject. Also, tell me what you're using in your computer. If this kind of content is interesting to you, then subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to hit the bell icon so you can be notified of future videos. Thanks again.